I knew Batman on the TV before I ever knew there was such a thing as a comic book. I mean, I was barely two when the show came on. It's one of my earliest childhood memories. Uh, or more like impressions, really. Mm -hmm. You know, then you just get older. Uh, you, you, know, you start going into some different titles. Like I said, the, the comic book wasn't a whole lot like the TV show, so I probably drifted a bit at that point. Took on, you know, Iron Man, Captain America, and um, a lot of Marvel titles and stuff. And uh, by the time I was in the 80s, I was playing in bands. Now I went on to music. I traded in the comic books for, you know, playing keyboards in a rock band. I remember standing in line waiting to see the 89 film. You're like, okay, it's a new Batman, you know, so let's see what this is going to be like. And it's got a Batmobile, it should be kind of cool. And uh, see, so like a live action Batman. I think that's what I was, I was, I thought I was hungry for. Standing in line with my elite vocalist, and he was wearing an Adam West pen on his lapel. You know, because those were fashionable in the 80s, and these pens. And he had this one of Adam West's head on it, and I was like looking at it, like, oh man, that, that's so cool. God, that, that's really cool. I think I was more excited about that pen than the movie when I got out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just kind of noticed every time I would see like a picture from the series or um, something of the old Batmobile or something like that, I would kind of feel this kind of like, oh, that's cool. And then you see, you know, Batman, you know, looking, you know, frowning in the comics and just being so dark and so brooding and just so damaged. Uh, it, it didn't really interest me on that end. Uh, but I did get the Keaton suit. And it was just strictly Halloween. It wasn't like I never did a convention in a costume. Mm -hmm. I never went into, you know, like this sort of public outing in costume. It was always a Halloween type function. Um, in the late 90s, my wife and I, we got a house. Mm -hmm. And I now have like my own room, my own little space where I have my keyboards and musical instruments and I can record and have my computer where I can do graphics and, and all the little fun stuff that I do in my studio. I just started seeing some action figures here and there. I thought, oh, I'm just going to spice up the room a little bit. I'll have this one, this one, and I'll have a little Batman over here and a Silver Surfer over here. He just evolved into where I ended up having like 200 <laughs> things all across the room. And I wanted to get a, I said, you know, it'd be cool to put a Batmobile in here. You know, nice, you know a 60s Batmobile. And uh, I wasn't doing like eBay or anything like that. I went to San Diego Comic Con and I found one. It just ended up being the number one Batmobile, the, the original Batmobile on display. I had no idea it was going to be there. And I it, that's where it all really just came to. I was watching on the screens that they have where they're showing the DVD, and you're seeing like the color and the costumes and, and the action and, uh, and that Batmobile. That just was just really inspiring. So, so I started thinking that, man, would it be cool to have a, a costume like that? And, and I became a member on this message board, the 1966 message board. That's really where my education really, really started to take off. There's just so many people filled with knowledge on there. Uh, and I met Wally, this guy who'd done costuming and so forth. They just got finished in this huge event out in um, Houston where they had the villains and Batman and Robin and Batgirl and all that. And it just looked like that. That was like, that looks really cool. And I thought it'd be cool to kind of join up with those guys and kind of do something. But all I could afford was a cow. So I stuck it on my head for a picture. I didn't even have a, a suit yet, but I had fabric for the cape. And I wrapped it around my head like, you know, like this. And uh, wrapped it around like as if I had the cape and posted that up on the board. And while he wrote to me instantly, he goes, you know what, this year for Comic-Con, forget about fall space, you be Batman. So the pressure was on. I, I actually I was able to piece together my first bat suit, which is not even really the same bat suit that I wear now. I had no idea what I was in for. I had never seen anybody in an Adam West suit before at a convention or anything like that. So I didn't know how people really reacted to that. And we hit the floor. We didn't even hit the floor. We didn't get out of the hotel where people were stopping us for our photo. Um, I honestly don't think I really sound like Adam other than I think I, um, I give me enough of a reference to something that was familiar, a cadence, uh, uh, and a little more of a silky, Baritone and purpose and very cautious speaking. Of course, if you have something that's really happening, there's a certain urgency. You know, quick to the back cave. We have one moment to lose. You know, that kind of thing. I think it all comes back down to a genuine warmth and love for things that are good. Uh, he represents the very, the very best that people try to be. You do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. It's not having necessarily your own vengeance or your own agenda. Whether or not the cynical age, uh, you know, we think, oh no, they gotta be, you know, it's not real enough. 
something to aspire to. It's something to enjoy, and there's plenty for people to get something out of that show and enjoy. Uh, this is Scott Sebring. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. I will do. It's been an absolute thrill. Thanks a lot, Eve. Thank you.